you remember if this Pinkman kid ever had an RV? Where do I go to make an RV disappear? I'm not David Copperfield. This is my own private domicile and I will not be harassed. Each week we break down another Breaking Bad episode in order. And this week it's a big turning point in the series. Season 3, Episode 6, Sunset. I've got 21 details you might not know, including two more shots where crew members can be seen. This is apparently a reference to The Shining. This is KDK-12. KDK-12. You know what the fly noises mean. Those flies were all digitally added. If the Heisenberg Shrine wasn't enough of a clue, you can now hear the cousin's theme song playing. Hold it right there! On your knees, we're on fire! Where do you suppose these come from? I've seen this one before. This painting is the same one from the pilot. Lung cancer. Inoperable. It's a privately owned expensive painting that they rented. I'm not sure, but maybe Vince is the owner because this is actually Vince Gilligan's condo. And I wouldn't be surprised if this was intentional. He sees your unhappiness. My completely out of the clear blue sky unhappiness. Skylar probably didn't realize her pun there. You wanted me out. I'm out. But I will provide for my family. Not with that money. You'd be making us accessories after the fact. Skylar, how do you think we've been paying our bills these last six months? I'll take it. Unfortunately, this one is the model, so... Yeah, I like it. I'll, I'll take it as is. <laughs> Name one thing in this world that is not negotiable. Now, I suggest that you add this to your schedule. Gus and Cynthia somehow switch sides. Oh, you ready to talk some business? It's not gonna be like it was. How's that? We don't get greedy. Man's gotta make his living. I guess I can see it. Had a good thing going before we started pushing our luck. Get the RV in shape, tune up, oil change, brake lights and whatnot. You know that buzzer thing. The buzzer, the buzzer, the buzzers when you put the keys in. Have him put in one of those too. What? Brandon Mayhew. I know you. Hank's finally on the right track. They're back. I'm just wondering if we should maybe call the police or something. I don't know if this is intentional to show that Gus is rattled, but he circles something with the wrong end of a closed pen. Hello there. Mr. White, Gail Bedecker. You're my new lab assistant, I take it. I have my, uh, my recipe here for you. I wonder if it's as professional as Jesse's and says curriculum vitae. Kudos to them for creating a real resume, although I can't be sure the name isn't Jack Test again. X-ray crystallography. Really? We could talk about that for hours. I would love to. First, I'm curious about this. I think there's dry ice in the mug because that steam is over the top, and it goes away when the camera switches. Oh my god, that is the best coffee I've ever tasted. Thank you, Mr. White. Walt, please, call me Walt. He's never said that to Jesse. Why the hell are we making meth? Everything's so peaceful and orderly. Perhaps it's what working at Grey Matter would have been like, except for the illegal part. Gail, I'm wondering how you ended up here. Consenting adults want what they want. At least with me, they're getting exactly what I kept thinking about that great old Whitman poem. Vince likes Whitman and he liked this specific poem in high school. When the proofs, the figures were ranged in columns before me. David Costable, the great actor who plays Gale, performed several different versions of this long poetry reading. Oh, actors do different versions? <laughs> I'm like, I got one and I'm fucking sticking to it. <laughs> Looked up in a perfect silence at the stars. Come on, Pink. That is a lot of Blake's Lauderburger. And yes, I checked the bags. Dave Porter wrote this Marie ringtone so they wouldn't have to license the music from a real one. It was important for later that this ringtone was recognizable. Marie, I'm working on right. I, for one, can think of someone who might know something. It's weird that Hank didn't think of this connection. Maybe he's blocking out the events leading up to the Tuco showdown? Who? Do you remember if this Pinkman kid ever had an RV? You know, like a, a Winnebago type deal, brown and beige. Why? Well, it's a long story, but I'm, I'm personally of the opinion that he's moved on from weed and graduated to selling crystal meth. Breaking Bad loves its clear surfaces tricks, but this is just an off-the-shelf clear calculator on a glass table. Yo. What? This is White. How's my favorite genius? Is this a secure line? Hey, hello to you too. Listen, we've got a problem. A DEA problem. This scene was originally written with a treadmill, but Vince got the idea to use this chi machine that the writer of this episode gave him and Holly for Christmas. It's my brother-in-law. He knows about the RV. What RV? It's also unbelievable that Saul needs to be reminded about the RV. Get to it before the feds do. The thing is, is the size of a... Of a, a it, it's RV size! Where do I go 
to make an RV disappear. I'm not David Copperfield. Did you not plan for this contingency? No. Starship Enterprise had a self-destruct button. Vince put in that reference as an homage to the writer of this episode who also worked on Star Trek Enterprise. Are you out of your mind? There's a crew member in Walt's car. We don't see how Walt knew where the RV is, but it makes sense that he and Jesse would have talked about Clovis. What's this about? The DEA. They know all about this RV, and they're trying to find it right now. A guy that'll wipe this off the planet. The door keeps switching between closed and open. What about Jesse? What about him? This was obviously a mistake on Walt's part not to give Jesse a heads up, but we know he was worried that his phone was bugged. Wanna hear something weird? You find out where he's taking it! There's a camera person. Gentlemen, these booths are for paying customers only. Cynthia, it's okay. That's the first time we've seen a cousin speak. Quando by so 98, 99, 100, beyond recovery, obliterated, no evidence. Hey, don't worry. When we're through with it, it's going to be about yay big. Chinese tear the patio furniture. So, mind it is. Funyuns? Funyuns are awesome. The hell you think you're doing? You don't get a gist. Oh, God. What? What? He's here. You let him right to us. Besides the fact that Hank's door is more open than he left it, his car seems to have gotten a lot dirtier. You got a warrant? I don't need one if I've got probable cause. Probable cause usually relates to vehicles. These round rubber things. Wheels. This is a domicile protected by the Fourth Amendment from unlawful search and seizure. It seems to me you're just out here fishing. Don't see that holding up in a court of law. Look at these. This cool shot is like the start of Crazy Handful of Nothing. If you're wondering what happened to the tape covering the bullet holes on the inside of the RV, Pasta Bloke inspired me to make a whole separate video about that. The link's in the description. How could you have known that they were there before you took off How the tapes? How could you have known they were there before you took off the tape? That's right. Probable cause needs to be readily apparent. Huh. Somebody in there. <laughs> I love that. One, two. This is my own private domicile and I will not be harassed, bitch. You want your warrant? I'll have my guys bring it out here and deliver it to you on a little satin pillow. By the way, these outside shots were filmed on a different day than the inside ones, which were filmed on a set rather than in the real RV. It was Brian's idea for Hank to drag the crowbar like that. Please tell me you got something. Yeah, I got something. This reluctance reminds me of this moment. Do you have anything else? Yeah, I do. Oh. It's me. We need your help. Yeah. Sir, this is Officer Elaine Tanner with the Albuquerque Police. I'm sorry to inform you that your wife's been in an automobile accident. She's being airlifted to Los Ranchos Medical Center and should be arriving there shortly. How is she? What's her condition? I don't um, have the most current information, sir. But I think you might want to get there as soon as possible. You're going to have to start paying me more. This is kind of the first phone to be broken in Breaking Bad. Tuco took the batteries out of three phones, but was surprisingly gentle with them. There's that familiar ringtone. Marie? I'm just checking in. I'd love to have some idea of whether I should cook dinner or not. Okay. Yeah, why? When Hank realized it was Marie and heard her voice, the color came back to his face. In real life, this is not THE RV. They bought a different one to destroy. And they sped up the footage. This becomes obvious if you look at Jesse. This is the last appearance of the RV besides a flashback in Ozymandias. It really is a big moment that divides Breaking Bad into two eras. We've exited the lighter era, which sounds weird if someone hasn't watched further, and now the show will get darker. It reminds me a little of how Better Call Saul has a big difference between its first half and second half. No. It's intentional that the cousins always steal gray vehicles to match their suits. Hank Schrader. 
Shout out to my channel members. This week, a record breaking nine new members join. Say hi to 3K8 Gaming, Zwerons, JQuiz, Opie, Jeremy Dick, Gaming vs. Cake, A Glass of OJ, Jewel Crooming, and Mr. Pizza 2410, the first new cat in a while. Let's say goodbye to the RV in the comments with your exclusive RV emoji. Or some serious Hank works as well. In one week, it's time for one minute.